Hi everybody and welcome to Corel Painter Essential 6. I have a brush pack I'm going to be going over with you in this video, the Blend Brush Pack. This is an additional brush pack that you can you can get aside from the software and I'm going to be going over in this video some of the brushes that come along um, uh, with this with this brush pack. Um, and kind of what their what their intention is and what they can be used for. And so I've got them all right here in this palette just so we can we can click them instead of opening this every time here. And I'm going to go ahead and first start off by saying actually that um, this photo here, of course, we used the blend brushes on, but what they what this picture originally was was this one. And of course, it took a couple of you know a little bit of cropping and and colorizing afterwards in in Photoshop or you can do it here in Painter um, <clears throat> and so how we got from here to here uh, with with these brushes um, had a little bit of intention and had a little bit of as you can see kind of chaos but in that uh, I'll, I'll kind of go over these brushes and show you what what kind of process that we took um, using them. So I'm going to go over to the uh, the stock photo right here and kind of just go down these brushes and see if we can do something cool with this. So the first brushes I have listed here are the, I kind of separate them as you can see, are the bristly brushes. And so these are kind of just basic blenders with a little bit of texture to them. Of course, of course you can up their opacity. Um, if you're using a mouse, you know, uh, use low opacity. If you're using Painter, I'm assuming you're using a tablet. Um, if you're using this in Particle Shop, maybe maybe you are using a mouse. Uh, but if you go if you go down to these two, you can you can see this one. There's there's bristly, there's bristly hard and bristly light. And so the difference between bristly, let's lay an example out, and then bristly hard, is that this one has a little more of an edge to it. So you can kind of see that's something you would use if let's go back to our picture. If you wanted to have that that edge there, you know, let's not even look for one of those strokes. Just anything. You see how these pixels here have more of an edge. That's kind of what that intention is. And then if you go bristly light, what you can see is something that you can use very subtly, but it's still within kind of that brush stroke effect, which is really important to maintain. But again, it's all about your intention with it. So those options are there so that you can really maintain that intention and get what you want out of your stroke, uh, which is great. Especially in essentials, um, as you can see, there is not much to do with editing brushes. So what that you get here is what you're going to get. So um, it's important to kind of have those options there. So let's go on over to the next little category. And this one, these two are, are, are named differently, but kind of have a little bit of a, a similar intention. So this one is coarse, and you can see big, it does things like that and small it does it kind of just has like it's almost like it's on a on a it's a dry brush stroke on paper but then if you go over here to fur clump it's it's like the same thing but it's more subtle and it kind of it maintains itself see this one kind of brought things out a little more this one if, if I were to put it on her eye for example it really just keeps things where they're at while kind of jumbling up them up a little bit which is really great I think if you've got everything else blended, but then you've got this little patch of something that's just a little smooth, you can kind of just add that that intention of texture in there um, for the sake of consistency and again for that organic effect that we go for. And you know, while using these brushes, you don't have to use a photo. Of course, this can be, of course, used to blend illustrations and uh, designs, anything you want. In this case, our key image is simply just a stock photo, so that's what we're going over. In the next section here, let's back up. Hopefully I didn't make too many strokes to undo. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and revert this. And I did make this small so that you could really see those brush strokes. In the next one, we've got these sergeant brushes. And the difference between these are simply that one is has got all this cool chaotic texture in it again, and one is simply the sergeant effect where we can push and pull things out as if it, it was an oil paint or you know this the sergeant brush stroke and so the difference between these again is, is subtle just kind of like the rest of these it's really about what their intention are 
what what their intention is and how much texture they have how organic are you making this stroke sometimes the stroke can be so organic it's hard to create things with or it's hard to um, maintain what you you know like let's say this face I didn't want to do as much uh, with with this it would almost kind of just I don't want to say destroy it would alter it a little more than I would want with this however both do the same thing so let's go over to speed undo all these here whoops so speed I find is really useful for composition what I can do with this is I can I can make strokes that go in, if, if I wanted kind of the wind if if you call it that to go in one direction I can do that but let's say I want it to go in another direction not that I would do this in an edit but let's say I wanted the wind to go this way I can I can blend things and pull things in a way that causes some motion um, to your picture so whether this is an illustration or a picture again that really helps you kind of define um, and add to your composition if it's not defined already and speed grain is simply the same thing but again it's that more organic effect it's the difference between like that digital stroke or sometimes you really want to get in there with that paper texture and the grain that that um, makes it a little more realistic if that's what you're going for and then last but not least I actually this happens to be my favorite one to play with is the starry night brush and it starts off at 10 opacity and you can you know a bit in a big brush stroke it goes like this but then in a small stroke what you're gonna get is you're just gonna get these very subtle changes just kind of like you know the name uh, goes back to that painting by Van Gogh it kind of has that same effect but then again just like I was saying if it were if it were big you could do a lot with this and then go in and and even kind of blend things up further so that's it for the blend pack I really hope you enjoyed this video and this shows you kind of a preview of what you're gonna get when getting these brushes and opening them I hope you have fun with them I know I did with editing this photo uh, thank you very much for watching um, and I'll see you around the internet.